when Mormon missionaries knock on your door and present their message to you, they will try to tell you that their Book of Mormon has been actually prophesied in the Bible, that it would come forth, and that someday we would have the Bible and the Book of Mormon together in one hand. I say in one hand because in the Mormon cult, I will not say Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, because it ain't the Church of Jesus Christ, it is a non-Christian cult. But within the Mormon cult, they have in one book, the Bible and the Book of Mormon together. They also have what's known as the Triple Combination, which will have the Bible, Doctrine and Covenants, another Mormon cult book, and the Book of Mormon, or a Quad Combination with the Bible and all three of their books in one book. But anyways, they have produced the Bible and the Book of Mormon together in one book. And they say the Bible has predicted that this would happen, that the Bible and the Book of Mormon would come together into one hand, the two sticks. It was prophesied, the uh, Mormon elder will tell you at the door, and therefore, we must be the true church. I know it's true, and I bear my testimony and babble and babble and all this. They get this from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 16 and 17. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, the only verses that the Mormon elder will quote to you are only verses 16 and 17 where Ezekiel was told to take a stick in each hand and then put those sticks together and they will become one, one within his hand, that these two sticks will become one. And that's all they will quote. Well, first thing we have to notice is that once again, as with every single Mormon doctrine, literally every single one, they're once again out of context. You see, whenever a Mormon elder at your door comes to you and preaches about their cult and tries to convince you that you need to join them, they will always take the Bible out of context. It doesn't matter what Mormon teaching he is talking to you about. All of them, when they go to the Bible to try to prove it, they will always take it out of context. And Ezekiel 37, on this uh, particular subject matter, they have once again taken it out of its context. You can't just quote two verses and then isolate them and say, well, this means and build an entire theology uh, on top of it because your religion told you already what it means. So you don't need to read on either side. It's a done deal because your church said this is what it means, so that must be what it means, so there's no need to quote any further. I don't care if the President of the United States and his entire cabinet told you what it already means. You need to read on both sides of any verse or set of verses. And in some cases, it is necessary to read an entire book to know the history and everything about what's going on to give a particular passage or even one or two verses context in order to understand them. This is why the Bible requires so much study is because so much can be needed sometimes just to understand what simply two verses mean. Now, more often than not, it's not necessary to read a whole book just to get the meaning of a verse or two. But it does and can happen. That's just how the Bible is. Fortunately for us, this video won't be too long because we don't need to read the entire book of Ezekiel to understand. Now, the Bible often uses symbolism. It does this all the time. And Revelation is a good example of it, for most of the book is symbolism. Ezekiel was told to take a stick in each hand. This is symbolism, but the Bible always interprets the Bible, and all we have to do to get the interpretation of what the sticks represent is simply read further. 
past verses 16 and 17 to get the answer. Once you arrive at verse 22, the answer stands out at you. It interprets what the sticks mean for us. So we don't have to ask our religion we belong to, what does this mean, and have them give you an answer, and then it's a done deal in your mind. No, the Bible interprets the Bible. So we don't need Joseph Smith to tell us what it means. We don't need Mormonism to tell us what this means. God has told us what he means. The first thing I want to go over just real quick is that the word stick in the Hebrew here in Ezekiel 37, 16, and 17 cannot be translated into scroll or book. So it cannot be interpreted, interpreted as a book. It was literally a piece of wood in Hebrew that he was to hold in his hand. He's given the people an object lesson, the symbolic lesson. Here's this stick and here's this stick. God told me to do this with them, put them together. And this is what God means by this. And here comes the interpretation. When you get to verse 21 and 22, God tells us in his word what he means. You see, the nation, or uh, Israel was divided into the southern and northern tribes. They were at war with each other. And this has been an ongoing prophecy, even in the book of Jeremiah. In many chapters in there, it's even prophesied. So this prophecy is an ongoing thing that's even spoken of in the book of Jeremiah. So there is a lot of context around this, pro uh, this prophecy that we could get. But for the sake of this video, I'm only going to show you what Mormons purposely won't tell you on your doorstep because probably they don't even know. Because they don't study anything in context when it comes to the Bible. Because they're there to try to support Joseph Smith. So they're just going to quote a couple verses, make Smith look good, and then back out of the Bible real quick. And then go into the one of their books, then share their testimony, and boom, it should be a done deal. Mormon is the only true church in the faith face of the earth, and you should join us. <laughs> no, that's not it, folks. That's not how you study the Word of God. But again, the word stick cannot be translated book or scroll. It has nothing to do with the book. It is literal pieces of wood, literal sticks. So you can't get book out of it. And there's only one thing that Ezekiel was told to write. He wasn't told to write, it, write the Book of Mormon down. There was only one thing. The name of each tribe was supposed to be written on each stick. That's all he was told to write. So it's not a book, and it's certainly not a book about the Lamanites and the Nephites and all this stuff with this long history and wars they fought and everything else. Because Ezekiel was specifically told to write one thing only on each stick, the names of the tribe. Now Israel was divided into the northern and southern kingdoms. They were at war with one another. God all the way through Jeremiah and here in Ezekiel, has been telling them for a long time now, he wants to take both of these divided kingdoms, put them together, and make them one nation. And he was going to be their God. And when you get to verse 22, it says, no, uh, well, God tells Ezekiel, when they ask what you mean by this, tell them this is what the Lord God says. Not, this is what Joseph Smith said. No. Let God interpret the meaning of this passage. Screw Joseph Smith. He says, tell them this is what the Lord God says. So what's more important, important here? To listen to what God's about to tell you what the verse means? Or to listen to what Joseph Smith is going to tell you this means? Who's more reliable here? <laughs> he says, when they ask you what you mean by this, which is putting the sticks together. He says, when they ask you, what do you mean by this? This meaning the demonstration he's showing them right in front of the people, putting a stick in each hand, bringing them together in front of the people. When they ask you, what do you mean by this? God says, tell them. Now here, God says, tell them. This is what I mean by this. He says, tell them. This is what you, the Lord God means. I will take. The people and bring them together into the, and 
the Lord goes on to say that he will bring them together, these two tribes, and make them one nation. He goes on to say, quote, no longer will they be two nations divided anymore. They will no longer be two nations divided anymore. They will be one nation. That's the interpretation. We're to listen to what the Lord God says the interpretation is. When he says, when they ask you, Ezekiel, tell them this is what God says. This is what I want you to tell them the interpretation is. Shouldn't we listen to what God wants to tell us the interpretation is? Instead of Mormonism knocking on your door and saying, well, Smith said, the hell of what Smith said. Let's listen to what God said. God told Ezekiel when they ask you, this is what I say to tell them what it means by what you just did. I will take these divided kingdoms. They will no longer be two nations anymore. They will no longer be divided into two nations anymore. They will be one nation. It is not books, ladies and gentlemen. It is nations. Not books. Does that sound like books to you coming together? No. Nations. Not books. But you see, the Mormons have zero evidence for the Book of Mormon. None. It defies all known scientific facts of the Americas, meaning what existed at the time, and speaks of things that we know for a fact. Not a guess, we know scientifically, historically, for a fact, did not exist, yet the Book of Mormon says all these things did exist. It defies known geography. Uh, it defies many things, and there is zero archaeological evidence to support the Book of Mormon. Nothing. So because they have nothing, they need to try to convince the Christian when they knock on their door that the Bible speaks of the Book of Mormon. It gives not only the church, but Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon itself more credibility. You see? Because the Bible is what everybody believes and reads who is a Christian or who is looking to join a Christian church. Naturally, they're going to believe the Bible. And a Christian says that the Bible is a fraud and they don't believe it is Pretty strange Christian indeed. <laughs> I've never heard of one. The cults know this, ladies and gentlemen. The, uh, the non-Christian cults in the world know that the Bible is the book. It is the main book that all Christians are going to read and believe. It is, the, it is the book above all books. And anybody looking for a Christian church is naturally going to believe the Bible, study the Bible. Read the Bible. So cults know that they must convince you that something they teach, uh, uh, one of their books or whatever it is, was either spoken about or prophesied about or mentioned in some way or another in the Bible. Because, see, if they can get you convinced that something about them is actually in the Bible, whatever that something is, they've got their foot in the door. The Bible is what they was what all cults has been trying to shove their way into for centuries. Because if you can convince somebody that something your religion says or teaches or one of their books is in the Bible in any way, shape, or form, you got your foot in the door. Getting in the Bible is a done deal. That's why cults want to convince you that something they say or something they published is in the Bible. If they can do that, again, they've got their foot in the door, and odds are, if you're looking for a Christian church, they probably will be able to baptize you into their religion. Now they've got you. Don't fall for this. The Book of Mormon is not in the Bible. This was a long-standing prophecy spoken of all over the Old Testament, very clearly. God was going to 
bring these warring nations together who were divided and join them as one. No longer will they be divided into two nations any longer. Ezekiel 37, 22. But they will be one nation, no longer two. So next time, ladies and gentlemen, that a Mormon missionary knocks on your door and he tries to tell you that the Book of Mormon is spoken of in the Bible, don't fall for that. Tell them, well, we're going to get some context. Don't stop at verse 17. Keep reading aloud. Keep reading and keep reading. You will slowly see them get more and more nervous if they are aware of the verse that I'm speaking of. If they are, if they are aware of the context, then they will know where you're going. And they will be getting more nervous and more nervous. But if they don't know then you will be a good witness to the Mormon to show them that the Bible does not predict the Book of Mormon in any way, shape, or form. And I and there's actually there's more verses that they use than the Ezekiel 37 to try to prove that the Bible speaks of their book. This video, I'm just going over uh, Ezekiel 37, 16 and 17. And I know the simple answers to all them other uh, proof texts that they use, too. So if you're a non-Mormon and you know of one that they're using, put it in the comments below, and I will give you the simple reputation for it. This video is only to cover one of their proof texts. But there, again, there's many that they use in the Bible to try to prove that the Book of Mormon is spoken of in there. It's not. The Bible does not mention Mormonism, Joseph Smith, the Book of Mormon at all. None of it. So God bless you YouTubers. And I hope that at least somebody, even if one person got something out of this and can now witness to the next missionary that knocks on his door, then praise God. So God bless you guys and have a great day. And uh, thanks again for listening. And please subscribe.